Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Um, Thank you. Maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to Zebra Girl, people who don't know anything about the film. How would you quickly introduce it? Um, so essentially it's, it starts off um, with this woman uh, and in the beginning, really, she stabs her husband in the head. Um, and, uh, but, but it's a non-linear film and it goes back to her childhood and through her life um, and also through her first date with Dan, her husband, who she stabs. Um, and so you find out what's happened to her and why she is the way she is and how she's got to the point of stabbing her husband in the head. And, you know, it's been on a fascinating journey this story, this film, I understand it started as a one woman play that you were doing at Edinburgh Fringe. So can you talk us through a little bit how the idea first came about and what was the process from, you know, performing it there to it then becoming a film, um, you know, with Stephanie as director? Yeah, so it was actually, I saw Kush Jumbo's one woman show, uh, Josephine and I at the Bush. And I mean, it was just incredible. And I thought that looks, like the most difficult thing you could possibly do. So I'll give it a whirl. Um, and I'd worked with Derek actually, who wrote the play. I worked with him in New York uh, for his theatre company. So I'd asked him if he wanted to write this, write a one woman show for me. And he came over here and he directed it and we took it to the Edinburgh, Edinburgh Fringe. And while we were there, we, we started having these conversations about actually it might work really well on screen. And then there were sort of there was a bit of feedback after from people that had seen the play saying, oh, this actually would work quite well on screen. And so we just had another mad idea that we'd go for it and write the screenplay. And in the process of that, I felt like I I felt like I really wanted a female director for it. I felt like because it's such a female-centered story, it might benefit from having that female sensitivity. And, you know, also I just want to champion female filmmakers as well. So it seemed like the right thing for this, for this project. Mm. And yeah. what was yeah. it like transforming it from a one woman play into a broader feature? Because obviously kind of things that you can maybe do on stage, you know, you then have to kind of like actually think, okay, well, how would we, how would this play out? How do we bring in these other characters? So, you know, what is the process like of translating? And, you know, are there some things that you think are easier to do on stage that are, you know, more difficult on screen and vice versa? Yeah, it was, um, which, you know, the strangest thing was, because when I did the play, it was, it was basically like um, having, having a, you were saying a one-sided conversation so it was just Catherine having this conversation with Anita and, you know, and the, and the other characters. But the play was then me quite literally having a conversation with a conversation with myself, like the, you know, the other people's lines. I was saying them in my head. And so getting to actually say the words and act with other people was, um, was, yeah, brilliant. Um, which just seems so normal as an actor, but yeah mm -hmm. obviously um but uh yeah it, it we you know we fleshed out a lot um and obviously we had uh different actors playing the you know the different ages as well um and yeah Steph Steph was a huge part of developing developing the script into um into the screenplay as well mm -hmm. and sort of bringing her experiences her life experiences to it too and obviously I didn't get to see the play, but certainly in the film, something that strikes you right from the beginning is that, you know, the, the kind of irreverent tone, if you like, um, it's like very kind of dark humor. So even though it really does go to some dark places, if you like, you know, touching on these kind of cycles of abuse and, and mental illness. Um, but there's also, you know, it's shot through with a lot of humor. So is that something that was there already in the play? And why do you think that tone was so important to the film and the story? Yeah, very much so. Um, that is the way that Derek writes. Um, he he definitely in and in his other in other plays that he written, he definitely always pushes pushes that boundary of uh, you know making the audience feel uncomfortable. Um, 
and um, yeah, I, I, I feel, I know Steph and I felt while we were developing it that there is such a fine line and we were very conscious of being, I think, I, I think the, the, the playing with the dark humour is what makes it unique and fresh and different, but there is a fine line when you are tackling issues like mental health and abuse that we were very conscious of, you know, it not coming across as crass in any way and keeping it accurate. And, you know, we talked to psychiatrists and, you know, read some wonderful books. And uh, we actually, we did a screen, sort of mid edit screening to get a bit of external audience feedback so that, you know, we knew that we were, we were sort of on the right lines with that and we weren't, you know, overstepping the mark. So that's the last thing we want to do, but while also keeping it, you know, keeping it fresh and different. And what do you think the impact of that is? Because it almost feels like maybe if you make a, a very serious film trying to tackle some of these issues, you know, maybe it's a completely different angle to come at them from. So you're kind of, you know, like you say, kind of making the audience uncomfortable, but also, you know, constantly subverting expectations and maybe it opens people's minds to think about these things in completely different ways. You know, what do you think the impact of, 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 of the film being that way? Yeah, I hope so. Um, I mean, I think as, you know, as a filmmaker or just as a, you know, a creative, you want to make those things that people, that open discussions and, um, you know, get people talking. And I do feel that um, it's, it's, it's probably quite polarizing. I think people, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is, it is quite polarizing, I think. Um, and I think that certainly, even when we did the play, people had like strong reactions either way to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of what you want to make though. I've got, I don't really want to make anything in, in between. Mm. And I was also thinking, you know, maybe there's something about um, particularly watching a female character do, you know, perhaps I take the bit at the beginning where she's doing, you know, these quite like outrageous things. And she's quite kind of cold to it, you know. Maybe audiences still aren't that comfortable or that used to seeing female characters, you know, behave in that way. So, do you think there's also something challenging there in terms of um, in terms of stereotypes and the kind of stereotypical characters we're used to seeing? Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, but I think I, you know, we're sort of seeing more more of that. I guess, like with promising young women is I guess another example of that um yeah and it's and it's certainly as an actor it's refreshing to to do to do that yeah to have was, these kind of roles yeah I was also thinking of parallel with Fleabag because of course she is yeah. quite you know quite a challenging female character not necessarily likable um and started as a one-woman show at Edinburgh as well right so yeah. do you think that's maybe there's something in that route as well that allows people to do things that are a little bit um you know, breaking with taboos and, and boundaries and things. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think, um, look, it's enjoyable to do that, particularly as a woman, it's, um, it, it, it's quite freeing to just not really care and yeah, just be, I was, you know, not crazy, but you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it also just... looked, looked like it was a lot of fun. It's got a very stylized look. And, you know, yeah. particularly your character, like I love the sort of, um, you know, pink jumper and pearls that she's, you know, seems to be really contrasting to the kind of way she's behaving. Um, but also, you know, like just the way the whole thing looks very kind of, you know, thriller-esque in the soundtrack um, yeah. and the way it's shot. So, you know, was that aspect of it, you know, kind of enjoyable to do as well, kind of creating this look, Stephanie? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the pink aspects, was from the play, um, you know, because of that contrast with, uh, you know, her, the, what she's doing, this, this murderous side to her. And, uh, and you know, she's stabbing him with a pink knife and chopping him up with a pink bow saw. Um, so it's quite, you know, keeping that tongue in cheek humor. Um, so yeah, so we kept that with, uh, you know, obviously into the, into the screenplay. And then, I mean, Catherine, um, Derry, who's our 
a cinematographer who did a, such an amazing job as well and sort of keeping those pink tones. I know that her and Steph work really closely together on that um, to create that real sort of pink hue throughout. Um, and yeah, Casper, our composer was fantastic as well. And But sort of keeping that, I know we really wanted to keep that fun even even within the score, that sort of fun, like sort of psychological thriller mm -hmm. tone to it, yeah. And it's got, you know, your fellow cast are also fantastic. What was it like working with Jade Nuka, who I remember seeing, I think she was in the Shakespeare trilogy, because she's from She was in yeah. the Shakespeare trilogy, and that's actually where I saw her for the first time. Oh. Um, and uh, so, and actually when we were talking about doing the, taking the scripts from, uh, into the screen, make, you know, developing it into the screenplay, um, yeah, Jade was who I, who I, she was my like number one who I wanted to play Anita. Mm -hmm. So um, to actually have her in the film was really a dream for me mm -hmm. and Tom as well. They were both fantastic. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, just a dream, really, really. The whole cast were a dream. Um, yeah, it's great. And so obviously I, I imagine some bits were a lot of fun, but you also have to, you know, do some really challenging scenes um, particularly maybe in the in the second half. Um, yeah. So, you know, what, what were some of maybe the highlights and maybe some of the most difficult bits of shooting? Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, the, I mean, there was so much fun in, in the whole, in, in the beginning section with you know, the playfulness with Anita and then also the chopping up of, of Dan um, and sort of dragging him down the stairs, which Tom was, he was so game. Yeah, he was, um, I was like dragging him around the house with this like knife in his head with this big like towel on, um, which yeah, was all just really good fun. Um, but yeah, it was, it's obviously there's some heavy parts. Do you know what, <laughs> the worst part, there's a scene where, um, where, uh, where she walks into the bathroom to get a cup of water and there's a spider up at the top of the mirror and so the team had been collecting spiders around the house and I like cannot stand spiders so they've been collecting these spiders like from around the house massive things as well and so the, so so they put the shot is like from the top of the mirror and so you can see the spider and then me sort of underneath and having to walk it, and every single time this spider would just like drop onto my head. And um, yeah, it was absolutely, I just, Steph, it was just, I mean, she was just like, you've got to get over this. Like, just get in there, just get in there and do it. <laughs> too <laughs> realistic, isn't it? Of, I'd say that was one of the more traumatizing scenes that I've had to do. <laughs> I hate spiders as well. So those scenes definitely um, got under my skin. Um, so yeah, so you know, overall, what do you hope that people will take away from watching the film? You know, like we say, it kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. You don't always know what's going to happen next, uh, or you know, your expectations aren't always, you know, they don't doesn't play out how you expect it to. So, mm. what do you hope people will take away at the end of it? I mean, I think that, um, as you say, I think it takes you to a place that you don't expect that it's going to go. Um, certain, you know, from the beginning, and. I really hope, I think, you know, Steph and I really talked about the, the fact that she's, she's not a victim mm -hmm. and, you know, um, she, I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's the, it's the not living in this, um, you know, yes, she's, she's had this, you know, horrendous past and, you know, struggling with her mental health, but she's always wanting to, to be better and to have a normal life. And, you know, I think, I think that was a really important thing for us to, uh, to portray yeah. is, is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it, it, it's tragic, but it's tragic because, you know, it's, it's, she's just so wanting to have, you know, to have this better life and to try and to not be a victim and always trying to sort of 
break out of that and it and yeah um and sort of that discussion I suppose um yeah and do you see that in general there are more opportunities you know whether theatre whether on screen for these kind of you know different types of female characters front and centre and you know female directed films uh, or do you think that still they're few and far between and perhaps, you know, maybe when you get into the bigger budget areas of the industry, you know, we're still not seeing it as often as we'd like, perhaps? Um, I would like to think that that's changing, though. Mm. And um, I certainly, people like, Reese Witherspoon is a really, really good example, actually, of someone who's inspired me to she starts, inspired me to start my production company and to make things for myself as a producer and as an actor. Um, so I think that, you know, and, and she's not the only one, you know, there are, it, it seems to be, I wouldn't say a trend, but just, it seems to be happening more and more that actually women are taking, taking it into their own hands and making, you know, creating things for themselves because maybe they're not, you know, being given there aren't as many good roles out there or whatever it might be. But I, but I think that, I think that tide is changing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely more so now. And I was at the screening the other day at the View Piccadilly and I was just like, I had not been in a cinema, for, I don't know for how long. So how does it feel to you to be putting a film out now just as we're able to be back in cinemas? And you know, what was that feeling like to, you know, as all be in a room watching it together rather than, you know, on the laptop, you know, watching from home. God, it's so nice. And, um, and, I, and I think that it really, you know, it, it, a film always benefits from being on a big screen. That's, that's what they're made for. Um, so it, it would seem a shame to, it, to have it just seen on, on, on a laptop. Um, so, I, you know, I'm thrilled that, that people are getting to see it on a big screen because that's where it's supposed to be. Um, and also just that cinemas are back open. Cause it's just, it was just so nice to be, like feel normal in a room full of, cinema full of people. I mean, I wouldn't say full, but you know what I mean. <laughs> and especially, you know, when it's got that kind of thriller aspect to it, you know, just with the score, mm -hmm. you know, the music and yeah. I, it's just not the same. It's not as creepy, it's not as scary as when you're like, you've got it that loud and that big somehow. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. And can you quickly tell us um, what you might be doing next, you know, after the release of this, if you've got something that's already in the pipeline, you were mentioning you may be a production company, so. I do, I have a little project. Um, it's a little TV series, uh, which is actually about, um, which is actually about baby loss, um, but also in a, a dark comedy um, kind of context. Very, uh, yeah, quite similar to Fleabag. That sort of tone um, that is that's really wonderful so yeah I'm working on working on that at the moment. Okay fantastic well thanks so much for sharing all that with us and best of luck with the next project and I was just gonna Thank notice you that you had the pink theme carrying on with your jumper and the nails so <laughs> I, yeah you know I, I've sort of subconsciously been been like collecting all these pink things around everywhere. Actually, I have my um, pink bosal sitting in my kitchen still from music. <laughs> just... <laughs> Love that. Yeah, just like method it. acting, you're getting really yeah, into it. I know, exactly. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I think my brother's probably a bit worried I'm gonna stab him in the middle of the night. Yeah. <laughs> Wrapping his head in a pink towel. Yeah, exactly. um, well, thank you so much. And it was lovely to chat to you. And yeah, best of luck with the release and hopefully lots thanks of other people can see it in cinema. So thanks so much. Cheers, lovely to speak thanks to you, Sarah. So